In Thai Buddhism, they're not allowing women to be ordained. Yes. Why? Because they don't listen to the Buddha carefully. <laughs> so there is no cultural bias against sex tourism, but there is a cultural bias about women becoming ordained monks. Yes, it's true. They have gone on the water tank, gone on my roof. They were going to shoot me. Like many, I practice my daily yoga and daily meditation. And that's about all I know of Buddhism. But when I learned that in Thai Buddhism, women are not allowed to be ordained monks, that grabbed my attention. Do you call yourself the rebel? Why am I? I don't know. <laughs> okay. But this is what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here in Thailand, meeting with women who are challenging the system and enduring risks and backlash for their beliefs that women can be spiritual leaders. There are 300,000 male monks in Thailand, but only 100 women. I'm meeting with the woman who started it all. Damananda is a bikini, which means she's an ordained female monk. When they refused to ordain her, she hacked the system and went to another Buddhist country to be ordained. She has now performed 100 ordinations for female monks. <laughs> Everything most women want. A successful career, yes. a good family, three children, a house, a car, yes. the whole package. Yes. And yet you decided to walk away from all of it yes. and pursue your spiritual path. Yes. What inspired you to do that? I was a professor teaching at Thammasat University for 27 years. One day I was putting on makeup I look at my own reflection in the mirror and I was kind of asking, how long do I have to do this? That was a turning point. The makeup you were putting, you were putting it because you were a TV personality. Right, right. And you decided to walk away. Yes. How did your husband react? He said, oh, you, you, can, you can also be ordained. No need to divorce, but I needed a divorce paper. Ordination does not happen if your husband is still an obstacle. So your husband supported your decision, basically? Not quite, not quite. But eventually he understood uh, and, and agreed. And your sons, how did they react? The sons understood, because all of them are grown, you know. The, the youngest one was 24. So you were 24 years old when your mother decided to leave yes. the worldly life into the ordained life. Yes. How did you feel about it? Uh, at the first time, uh, I, I cannot accept it. Yeah. Or be, because I, I think that like I will lost here. Once when I become a monastic, a female monastic, I cannot touch uh, opposite sex. But is it hard that it you is, see your it son is hard. and cannot? It is hard. hard. Him. Yes, it is hard. But it is possible when you when you aim at something higher. The love is still there, but it is not the love that is clinging. You sacrifice a lot for this. Leave everything you built. As you were climbing up this social status, you know, it gets to a point that you are always looking for something more. It's endless, endless desire, and you never really feel complete. I never felt complete until the day when I was ordained. You call it fulfillment. You feel happy, balanced, and this is what I was looking for all the time, spiritually, Emotionally, physically, this is it. Like all Buddhist monks, once a week, the women bikinis go to collect morning alms. Can you tell me more about the tradition of the alms? As monastics, we don't have anything at all. So therefore, even the food, to feed ourselves, we have to go out and ask for people. So it shows how people support us. It is a community of dependent. You know, we depend on the lay people. The lay people depend on us also to guide them spiritually. I was deeply touched by the experience. They pray for them, they look at them in the eyes, and there is an exchange of relationship. There is an offering of food and there is an offering of prayer. 
And that's almost the opposite of what most people in the world do. We just pass by the people who are asking for food. And it's so beautiful here, so respectful in here. I was deeply touched by it. Now let's go to the history yes. of, of Buddhism. Because yes. the history started, of course, with the Buddha himself. And then also it entails women being ordained yes. during the Buddha's time. The first woman who actually asked the Buddha for ordination was the Buddha's own stepmother and aunt. The Buddha allowed women to be ordained, not because Ananda was begging for him, but because women can be enlightened. This is a message that got across to me. And yet, in Thai Buddhism, they're not allowing today women to be ordained. Yes. Why? Uh, because they don't listen to the Buddha carefully. <laughs> <laughs> Tikawi, a monk and a main leader at the Buddhist Protection Center. He's also a vocal opposition of women becoming ordained monks. Let's see what he has to say. He's sort of a big deal. The end of suffering into enlightenment. Is that enlightenment equal to women and men? But <laughs> You have been quoted as saying, the ordination of women is not acceptable because women are sensitive and not disciplined. ที่พระพุทธองค์ไม่ประสงค์จะให้บวชในตอนแรกๆเพราะว่าสตรีเพศหรือผู้หญิงนั้นเอ่อ <laughs> I want to understand better the male resistance to it and the women resistance to it. You know, the men I heard is a quote that's saying women are staying on celibacy. Yes. Tell me yes. more about that. Ah, sign up. It's in the text line by line. But because the monks have been teaching in this country, so they would quote only the first line that addressed the women. So I quote the second line that addressed the men. The men are also obstruction for us, for our celibacy. I love it. Yes. I love so it. So that's why you have to read the text. I love it. The text is the power. Some female monasteries haven't just been threatened, they've been attacked. Dr. Lee leads the International Women's Meditation Center and refuses to be intimidated. Today, she's ordaining two more female monks. So tell me what happened here. Um, we had uh, an attack. It was a Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock, a very peaceful time of the day, and two men jumped over the fence. They had gone on the water tank, gone on my roof. They were going to shoot me. I was in the other area, and when I saw the smoke, I came running, and I, uh, I shouted unto them, please don't burn down my temple. Wow. My whole building burned within about 20 minutes. The whole thing was gone. They had accelerant into wow. the building. Where I, was this I, building before? This wow. was dormitory. The assistant village leader stood in front of the temple and shouted at the villagers who came to help, don't go in, don't help them. I was informed by the police that if I agree that the fire was electrical, I will receive insurance money, but I refused to. There are women monasteries that have been attacked. Has there been a response to that? ประเภทขี้เมาเรื่องอะไรก็ได้เราก็ไม่รู้แต่ว่าถ้าชาวพุทธแท้ๆแล้วเนี่ยจะไม่ไปทําร้ายกันแบบนั้นไอ้ ask some male monks and they said this attack has nothing to do with the bikini order the morning after my temple was attacked in front of my temple there was a monk doing a victory chant meaning that success on that they burned down my temple are you worried for your life uh my life is under threat my embassy has asked me to leave. And yet you choose to I stay choose here? I choose to stay here. Why? I have, I have 50 monastics I'm responsible for. So if I go away, who's going to look after them? So I stay. Didn't the Buddha himself allow women to be ordained? I was a good they believe that women must be ordained by first fully ordained 
nuns in a country when we don't have female monks. If you insist on having female monks to give ordination, it means they say no. So it's a technicality, basically. Technicality, yes. Not the principle, technicality. What did you do about it? So I went for ordination in Sri Lanka. Okay, you're not giving us ordination, that's well and good for you. So that's what the Thai women have been doing. There is a woman here in Thailand who was ordained as a monk outside of Thailand. How do you feel about her? Well, I have a feeling that if they believe in that, they can do it. But we can't help them. Two, we have to follow the rules of the country. Can you tell me more about why do you think it's okay with, for the women to be nuns but not monks? The white robe nuns are not ordained, so the monks can ask them to wash the robes or clean the place. But once when you're ordained, they cannot ask me because it is against their monastic code. Women monks, are they rebels or are they reformers? The monks are not the same. They are not the same. Since they attacked our temple, I installed spotlights and cameras. The Taiwanese people. Bikuni leader came and put wire around the outside of our temple. They're watching what's happening, trying to protect us. Is there a cultural bias against women becoming Yes. Ordained. There's a cultural bias because this is number one in the world for sex trade. Money. In Thailand. Yeah, there's an economy making so much money off of sex tourism. So there is no cultural bias against sex tourism, but there is a cultural bias about women becoming ordained monks. Yes, it's true. So when we look at the religion, there's some many misogynistic teachings that are not in the teachings of Buddha that are being taught here. When you go and ask for alms in the morning, are you worried for your safety? Absolutely. They already burned down our temple. So male monks basically have their lives heavily subsidized, subsidized by yeah. the government. Yes. I still pay tax, you know, and my tax money go to support this, but not us. So do we, we don't have access as a, as a female monastic, you know, to, to enjoy all these facilities that the government paid, that the government provided from our tax money. This is discrimination, basically. Yeah, yes. This is discrimination. Very yes, very it's clear. very clear. Yeah. yeah. Do you think you will witness a change in your own lifetime? Do you know, when I started my academic studies some 40 years back, I did not even expect to see female monks in my tradition. But now, not only that I see, I myself is already part of it. You know, so that we have really come uh, very far from, from where I started 40 years ago. We have more than 100 now. now. So it's like snowball. The snowball is gathering its own momentum without me now. They are getting bigger and bigger. And it's going to be very difficult to handle us, you know. We are increasing day by day. This was my first time to enter a women's monastery. What struck me the most is that they changed the relationship with beauty. On the one hand, women shave their head, no makeup, and they don't even have mirrors. And yet, beauty is everywhere. In their surroundings, in their gardens, in the temples, in the way they do every ceremony. It was really inspiring. A lot of people in the Western world see other cultures and they think women need saving. What I saw here in Thailand? Yes, there's a lot of struggle. But women are saving themselves. They're not allowing anybody to stop them. 